Hello, welcome to Raymond Castile's Basement of Horror. We're going to continue our look at the new Mego monsters. Continuing to look at them one at a time. Instead of doing all of them in one program, we're looking at each figure individually. So... Let's see, what should we look at next? Well, we might as well get this one over, uh, over with. Uh, he's on top. Okay. So, this one's been out for a while. This is the creature from the Black Lagoon. It is uh, officially licensed through Universal. Obviously, they really couldn't get away with releasing this without official licensing. There he is, the creature from the Black Lagoon. So he came out, oh, I don't know, in the fall? I don't remember if it was before or after Halloween. I think it was after. I think it was maybe November. And it took me a long time to buy him. I just wasn't that interested in him, frankly. And I'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But when I bought this, this batch, I... I caught up with all the Amiga monsters that I didn't have yet. Here's the uh, back of the card. A famous publicity still from the creature from the Black Lagoon. Now, I don't know how long this, this is I think style guide art I don't know how long that's been around, but I could swear I've seen that in years past. I think they've used, I think Universal has used that, that artwork before. I think that's been in the style guide before. If not, then it's something very, very similar to that was used in the style guide in the past. And obviously that's an illustration of <laughs> that famous photo. And you can, if in the sequel, Revenge of the Creature, that photo is turned into a cutout standee at the, uh, it's not, it's not SeaWorld, it's uh, some other marine park, and, uh, but it's like SeaWorld. And it's standing up uh, in the park when the creature uh, escapes and he's rampaging, he knocks it over. Okay, so one reason I wasn't in a terrible hurry to get this <laughs> is because I already had this figure. Which we've seen on the show before. This is the MC, the MC Diamond Select. Universal Monsters Creature from the Black Lagoon. Now we saw him last year when we when we looked at the MC set. And here's the creature from 2020, the Mego creature. And here they are side by side. So, obviously, the Amigo is a reissue of the MC, and uh, I've never, this is the first time I've seen them next to each other. I'm just curious if they changed anything 
with the moles of sculpt. Um, is, is that height the same? I can't tell. So the biggest difference, uh, there's a color difference. The, the MC is a, looks like a brighter green. Yeah, so this one looks like a brighter green than this this one. And uh, the MC has plastic fins on its back, on its, uh, yeah, it looks like its spinal fin is bla plastic and fins on its arms and its legs. So all of its fins, which you probably can't see very well, all the MC's fins on its back, its, its spine, its arms, its legs, they're all plastic. Whereas the new Mego creature, it has fins, but they're fabric. So all of its fins on its back are fabric. Which is more Mego-like. That's how Mego would have done it in the 70s. The paint is different on the head. And it's not like a different color scheme or anything. It's just a different style of paint. There's more shadowing on the Mego than there is on the uh, MC. And uh, MC looks like maybe it's um, a wash, like a light wash of darkness, dark paint, so it gets in the crevices. Whereas the, that's the MC. The, the Mego looks like it's airbrushed, like they airbrushed in some dark shading. And I imagine you know, all the plastic parts of the Mego probably have a unique, uh, have, have an airbrush kind of a paint style as opposed to the MC. So you can see there the difference. There's more paint on the Mego, and it looks like it was applied with an airbrush, whereas the MC looks like maybe it's a wash where they take very thin paint and just sort of splash it on they just sort of coat coat the the sculpt and let the paint kind of run off and dab it off that's that's how you do a wash and then there's paint residue left in the crevices and that makes the recessed areas darker that's just a guess you see, even on the chest you can see there's more more paint on the Mego chest so uh also, the I think there's a different difference in height. The MC is packaged with his knees bent, so it's a little hard to tell. But I've seen pictures of these side by side, and one appears to be taller than the other, and also one stands up straighter than the other. I don't know which one. I think it's I think the MC is the one that has a bit of a slouch. Whereas the Mego stands up straighter. And it's not just, um, I've seen more than one photo with this. It's not just the way the whoever took the photo posed them. It's the body type. There's something different uh, in the body styles. Uh, I don't know what exactly, what kind of, I've never seen them naked. I've never seen an MC figure naked. Uh, I've seen pictures of Mego figures, modern ones naked. I don't know if MC officially used the same body type that Mego is using but it appears from photos that there must be some difference because they don't look exactly the same side by side. There, there's a difference in posture and slight difference in height. And so I don't think the bodies are exactly the same under this costume. But the hands uh, and the feet and the head and that chest plate, they all seem to be the same. And the artwork on on the costume it looks like it's all completely the same all the little lines look like they're the same on both of them if there is a difference in color and the mc is brighter brighter green whereas the ego is a darker more drab green hmm 
still, all of those are, are minor differences. The Mego is a reissue of the MC, but like most reissues, it's not exactly the same. Uh, the I like I like I like the MC card. Very colorful, really pops. It has a very professional look. I mean, that looks like a toy package. I like that. In front and back. Now, would it be better if there was some kind of like the Super Seven uh, reaction Super Seven toys? If there was like a portrait painting, a really nice painting of the creature here. Yeah, that'd be better. Uh, the, the, this, this is a painting, and that looks pretty good if that had been filling this space. I think that might be cool, or, or if there had been a, a larger painted image of the creature, that might have been cool, but it's still, it's good the way it is. Here, now a lot of people have praised this card I heard a lot of people say, wow, look at that card. I, I, I got to tell you, I'm, I don't like this card. I don't like it. I don't like, I think it's cheesy to have this kind of an illustration here. I just don't, I mean, I, that's a, yeah, I, I, I would have rather seen um, like what they did with some of the other monsters in had just an environment, like a jungle with water you know, for the lagoon and just suggested the environment that the creature lives in, which they are doing with several of their monster characters, but they didn't do it with this one. Maybe Universal, well, you know, I say maybe Universal required them to do it this way, but I don't know. They're, they're Frankenstein and their bride kind of had that format of showing like the environment where the monster lives. And I've seen the card for the Wolfman, and it also has that kind of an environment, but it also it, it has a picture of the Wolfman too on the front. Uh, but this like this looks like I don't know if this came from Univ yeah I think this these trees came from Universal because there's there's another there's another product that has uh, that Mego didn't make that has those same trees on it. So all that art came from Universal. Uh, and I don't know why, I don't know. I mean, they could put that on the back. I can understand they wouldn't want a black and white image on the front. Okay, I get that. I, I, what I would like, what, what, what Reaction Super 7 does is what I wish <laughs> Miko would do. I wish they would hire a really good illustrator to make beautiful paintings on, to put on their cards. That's... You know, no, no more stock art, no more clip art. You don't have to use art directly from the style guide. Obviously, Super 7 does not do that, so you do not have to do that. So, I don't know. People, a lot of people have praised the, the card art, and I'm just, nah, I'm not a fan of that. It's too cartoony. Too cartoony and too. Mm. It doesn't do the figure justice. It doesn't do that figure justice. <laughs> uh, now you see in this one, he's got a picture of the creature back there behind him. And something like that. Now I'm not saying this is the end all of everything, this card art. I mean, it's nice, but it's not the only way to do it. It's, this also could have had a beautiful painting like something like that here but more fully realized um, so it's you know I, I've Migo has put out worse cards that's for sure so it's better than better than many other cards like say the headless horseman card or, or whatever that's Migo's put out some bad cards so it's better than that, but I wish I wish it had a more advanced artwork than what's there. And I don't know why the Universal Monsters logo is behind the figure. That's really weird. You'd think that would be 
up here or or something. We just putting it behind the figure is kind of strange. And the card art's important because um, these are marketed to adults, as it says up here, ages 17 and older. They're marketed to adults. So a lot of people who buy these, I think, are not going to take them out of the package. So that's important. With the, the package, maybe I'm going on too much about the package, but the package is important. I'm not taking it out of the package, and I think a lot of collectors are not going to take these out of the packages. So... Um, the MC Creature is a great toy. It's uh, very different from previous versions of the Creature done in Amigo style format. Man, just looking at his costume, make sure it's not coming unraveled. I don't think it is. No, it's not. So the MC Creature was a kind of a big deal in its time because it was so different from anything that had come before. Like this was the probably the most famous creature action figure. And it still is, I guess. Now, this one has most of its paint missing, but I've had a fully painted one on the show before. So that's the Azra Kenway wide waist or male creature. And that's the that's the most famous creature action figure. And Remco made a, a nine inch creature um, sideshow. I, sh oh, I was gonna, I was gonna have, kinda like I did with the Red Death, I was gonna have the sideshow creature here, but I forgot. Darn it, oh well. Better luck next time. Um, but sideshow made eight inch all PBC with, with no costume and uh, 12 inch with a rubber skin. So there's been a number of, of creature figures over the years. But this MC creature was a unique take uh, the, with a, the fabric costume, kind of like the Remco, but more detailed and with that weird chest plate and shoulders that was a different idea so um when talking about the amigo all i can really do is talk about how it's different from the mc i can't really evaluate it on its own merits because it's the same toy the only thing the only points of discussion really are what what are the subtle differences between them, which I've just done. Is it a good figure? Well, yeah, it's the MC, which is a good figure. And now here it is again. And I mean, it, is it, does it kind of have its own character? Yeah, because it's, like I said, I think the body is a little bit different from than the MC because it has a little different posture and the paint on its head gives it a little different look and the color is a little more drab than the brighter green on the MC. So yeah, it has its own character, but you know, it's all subtle. We're kind of splitting hairs here. And you can see how, here's one of its fabric fins very visible right there. So when it came out, when this creature came out last year, this Mego creature, I, I was not very happy because this was the first licensed Universal Monsters Mego action figure. The first time Universal Studios had granted a license to a company called Mego. In the 70s, Mego made the Mad Monsters, but they were not licensed, they were generic. Frankenstein, Dracula, Wolfman, Mummy. They were generic uh, creations of, of Mego. They were not movie licensed monsters. Azrak Hanway had the Universal Studios license and they did licensed 
Frankenstein, mummy, wolfman, creature. Their Dracula was not licensed because of the usual issues with the Lugosi estate and Universal, and, you know. So, uh, Mego, throughout its original run, never made licensed Universal Monsters. And for years and years, people thought, well, what would it be like if, you know, if Mego made Universal Monsters? So when the MCs came out, uh, as I said in that show last year, I think we got our answer. What would it be like? Well, it would be like these. These, these are basically Mego Universal Monsters. And the first series MC monsters had, this, this one doesn't, but the first series, and maybe the second one too, because I, I think there were, how many different series were the one? Two, I think there were four, four different series. Each series had two characters. And the first, I think, two series had this strip, like the Migos, with Marty Abrams' face talking about Mego just like that. So there was a lot of um, connection between the MC and Mego. I don't know if there was any corporate connection, but there was certainly an attempt uh, to link the MCs with the Mego heritage right from the beginning. It was right there on the card, on the back of the card. Okay, so, but they were not Mego officially, they were MC. Mego as a company didn't exist at that time. Now Mego exists again, and for the first time they have the license for the Universal Monsters. That's a big deal. They never had it in the 70s. Now they've got it, and they've got Hammer as well, kind of like how in the 70s they had DC and Marvel at the same time. Now Mego has Hammer and Universal at the same time. That's a big deal, that's a big deal. So I feel like the, you would think when they got that Universal license, they would launch it, launch this new license with a new figure, like to show this is what Mego can do. This is, this is, the Mego version of a Universal Monster figure. You know, forget all those other ones, you know, Azrak or unlicensed like Lincoln, Remco, Sideshow, Playco, Hasbro. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is Mego. This is the Mego Universal Monster. So you'd think that they launched that with a new figure. So I was disappointed that they launched the new license, this historic new license for the first time, Mego Universal Studios Monsters. They launched it with a repop. Well, not exactly a repop. Repop is when you, well, I don't, I don't know. I won't do, I, I don't know if it's technically repop. Let's say reissue, that's, that's accurate. It's a reissue of an older figure that Mego did not make. So I didn't, I didn't like that. I thought, uh, um, hmm. Well, so I wasn't very happy with that. And that's another reason I didn't buy some of the monsters a little sooner. Then when I found out that they were making Boris Karloff Frankenstein figures. They were continuing the Universal line with Boris Karloff, new Boris Karloff face sculpts. I said, ah, that's, that's more like it. And I like the photos I've seen of the Karloff Frankensteins. There's a original Frankenstein and a son of Frankenstein with a woolly vest. And they look good. And they're supposed to be on their way to me, but I don't have them yet. Hopefully I'll have them soon, and then you'll see them. And that's really what triggered me to, to buy this box and say, okay, I guess it's time to catch up with the Mego monsters. They're, they're not just gonna reissue MC from here on out. They're gonna make new toys. 
because I thought, you know, if all they're going to do is just put the MCs back out, you know, I, I'm not interested in that. So I wasn't sure if I was going to continue with the Mego Monster series. So the, the Frankenstein saved it for me. Unfortunately, it looks like the bride is a reissue of the of the MC, even though she's green. So at least they changed that. That's good. And the Wolfman is also a reissue of the MC. And I'll, I'll talk about that when I have him. But uh, let's just say that the, the Wolfman is my least favorite of the MC line. So I was really hoping for a new Wolfman. NECA is going to do a Wolfman as well, so, but they haven't posted pictures of it yet. I'm curious to see what it looks like. But we'll talk about that when I have the Wolfman. So, uh, I, I'm excited about the Frankensteins, but I'm not excited that every other one, the creature, the bride, the Wolfman, every other one has been or is going to be uh, an MC reissue. They did uh, a Phantom of the Opera, the Cheney face Phantom of the Opera a year or two ago that was not universal licensed, but it was a new sculpt. They didn't reissue the MC Phantom. They did a new sculpt. And you can argue about which one's better. I think the MC sculpt was better, but I'm still glad they did a new sculpt. And you, so we have another take on the Phantom. We have the Mego Phantom. I like that. I'm glad they did that. Uh, I'm glad they were able to make a Bela Lugosi Dracula. I, I, I don't know what if we're going to get a universal licensed Dracula from the series. It's not going to look like Bela. Probably would be the MC again, and I don't know what the point of that is. We've already had the Bela, and we've got a Christopher Lee hammer. So is there any reason to make a generic Dracula? And we've already had a generic Dracula from Mego, the, the collectors called the Disco Dracula. I think it used a Romulan head, but it was glow in the dark. Yeah, okay. And we've had Nosferatu, and so we don't really need a reissue of the generic MC Dracula. Are we going to get it anyway? I don't know. I imagine if they make the mutant, the Metaluna mutant, they'll probably reissue the MC. Um, if they do a universal mummy, they, I don't know, they might reissue the MC head, but boy, I hope they change that costume. Uh, that costume was hasn't aged well. The MC mummy costume has not aged well. The generic Mego mummy that they put out a couple years ago had a really good costume. So maybe they should just put that costume out again if they do a universal mummy. I'd rather see a hammer mummy if they're going to do another mummy. I'd rather see a hammer mummy. Or, of course, I'd love to see a Universal Lon Chini Jr. Karis. That's not going to happen. They, they wanted to do it with MC. MC wanted to do it. And Universal shot it down. A Karis. They had to use Karloff. So I bet that's still in place. Whatever the issue is there, I bet it's still in place. And we're not going to get a Chini Jr. Or a Tom Tyler Karras. So maybe they should just skip the Universal Mummy and just give us a Christopher Lee Karras from Hammer. I'd rather see that anyway at this point compared to if, if that's that or a reissue of the MC Karloff Mummy. We don't need that. Give us the Christopher Lee Mummy. If you're going to do another Mummy this year, do the Hammer Mummy, the Christopher Lee Mummy. Yeah, and then you can give people something new, and it's not compromised. It does, you know, like, whatever issues there might be with the Cheney likeness and Universal right now. I think there's some problem there. 
Well, you could just bypass that and do the Christopher Lee mummy. So, I don't know what else to say about this creature. I'm looking to see how, how many minutes we've got here. So my, 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 the, the reason I was, I was down on that was, as I stated, I just felt like it's a big deal, universal. Migo finally has the universal license. I would think they'd, they'd mark that occasion with a new figure. And, and as good as the MC creature is, I don't think it's the last word in 8-inch creature figures. I can imagine different ways that you might present that character in the 8-inch format. It would have been interesting to see another take on it, like they did with the Phantom. Give us a, another take. Maybe it would be better or worse. We don't know. We could compare it to the MC and debate which one was better. And uh, the, the chest plate now, if there were... The chest plate is a very un like detail on this. So maybe they could have made that chest plate fabric instead of plastic, and that would have made it more mego esque and also helped differentiate it from the MC. So keep the head, keep the hand, keep everything else like it is, but make that chest plate fabric like, you know, they did the fins fabric instead of plastic. Maybe they could have made the chest fabric, which is how Migo would have done it anyway back in the 70s. Now, I understand the reason why the MC did this. They didn't want, they were trying to get away from the pajamas look, I think, and uh, they thought that would help and, and build up the shoulders because the creature has you know, shoulders that protrude like that. So I understand that, but they could have done that with fat, with, they could have done a fabric version of that. That would have made it more uniquely Mego and set it apart from the MC. So that's one way they could have they could have done things uh, to make it more unique. So I'm you know I'm just not really enthused about the creature. It's it's not it's not that it's a bad toy. Uh, it's, I just wish, I really wish they were not reissuing the MC figures. I just feel like the Mego, Mego getting, why have Mego get the universal license only to put out toys that another company already made? They've got the DC license, but they're not putting out their old DC figures from the 70s. It's already been done. The FTC already did that. And I think, um, was it Mattel? I think another company also. There's been more than one reissue of those 70s superheroes. So I was kind of bummed out that they launched the Universal license with a reissued figure. And I was happy to see that they were putting out new figures, new sculpts with the Frankenstein Migos. But once again, I'm unhappy that it appears Bride Frankenstein and definitely Wolfman are again more MC reissues. And wouldn't it be great to see new Migo Universal Monsters? We've already seen the MCs, and as nice as the MCs are, they're not the last word in Universal Monsters. There's a hundred different ways to present these characters. Let's see the Mego way, not, not the MC way, but we've already seen the MC way. Let's see the Mego way to present these characters. So we're, we saw it with the Phantom a couple years ago. We're seeing it with Frankenstein. We saw it with Bela Dracula. I'd like to see 
the Mego creature and the Mego bride and the Mego wolfman. And um, uh, if they make a mummy, a Mego mummy. And not MC, which we've already seen. And you can say that, well, they're, they're not available. You know, they, they, they were not distributed very widely and they're hard to find now and they're expensive. So, I mean, we don't, we don't need to own MC figures. If you're a toy collector, that's your choice if you want to own them. You don't need this particular line of toys, especially if Mego perhaps made superior toys. I don't know. Mego could make better versions of these characters. Like their Karloff Frankenstein, I think, is, from what I've seen, that's a better Frankenstein than the MC one. Their Bela Lugosi Dracula was a better Dracula than the MC one. Their Phantom, I, th I thought the MC Phantom was better, but at least it, their Phantom was a new Phantom, a new take on the character. So I don't know what the future holds with MC and Universal. At least with the Hammer figures, they can't reissue anything because there hasn't been a Mego style Hammer ever before. So at least there we know we're going to get new figures. So I'm looking forward to more Hammer figures. Universal it's kind of anticlimactic. I'm kind of, you know, okay, well, you know, I'm not that excited because it looks like it's going to be mostly MC reissues. And I've got the MC line. We've been there. We've done that. We've seen that. I would like to see new Universal Mego monsters. Okay, I've made my point. That's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, the I have I have the new Universal Migos supposedly on route to me. So hopefully in the next few weeks we'll see them here. Thank you very much again for watching. The one who dies with the most toys is dead.